Hey guys, Penguin Recordings here, and today we'll be looking at the RTX 1390, running Shadow of the Tomb Raider in Ubuntu and Windows. I know it's been a very long time since my last video, and I do apologize. Long story short, I had to abruptly stop pretty much everything due to medical reasons. All the videos and collaborations I was working on came to a full stop immediately. No, I did not die, but thank you for asking. And thank you very much for all of those who left very kind messages and emails. I appreciate it very much. Now on to the video. All right, to start things off, we're going to be having Vulcan go against DirectX 12 head to head. Now to be clear, there are some differences in the graphical settings that are available on the Linux side, which we'll address at the end of the video. But to be clear, we used the same settings on both platforms. Now one thing to note is that you'll see it says Feral 3D on the Linux side. That's just Feral Interactive's Vulkan implementation on Linux. Vulkan has to translate DirectX 12 and 11 calls under the hood to be able to operate on the Linux side, so it has additional overhead. With that said, it's actually pretty impressive that the Vulkan implementation can even keep up with DirectX 12 as we're seeing here. So on the right is actually DirectX 12, which has no overhead, it's straight to the graphics card, and it doesn't seem to be doing that great. The differences we're seeing is anywhere from as slow as 1 to 2 frames per second on average, up to about 10 frames per second on average. At these frame rates, it's not really a deal breaker, so what you're seeing is that you're able to get 4K 60fps on both platforms. So if you're playing on Ubuntu or you're playing on Windows 10, you're getting 4K at 60fps on the RTX 3090. So Nvidia has done a pretty good job with the graphics driver, surprisingly, on Linux. I was expecting some issues on the first day, but nope, yep, it operated the same as Windows 10 does. One thing I did find rather odd here is that on Windows, it seems to very heavily favor using the system RAM rather than the VRAM of the graphics card. So you'll actually note that it's sitting about 8 gigs of VRAM usage on the Windows side under that green VRAM text right there. But on the Linux side, it happily uses up to 10 gigs of VRAM. Now ideally when we're gaming, we want the game to utilize VRAM 100% and not put anything into RAM if possible because that's the fastest way it can operate. Every time it's in RAM, it has to talk to the CPU to transfer it over back to the GPU, which is not ideal. So it seems that DirectX 12 here doesn't really know how to utilize VRAM very well, at least in these initial stages. Or this could be a Windows NVIDIA driver thing where it's limiting it to 8 gigs so it doesn't crash certain systems. I have noticed that a lot of the Windows games I've tested don't utilize VRAM to the maximum that they possibly can. So with 24 gigs of VRAM right here, I'd expect it to be able to use it all, and it doesn't seem to know how to. So it's definitely impressive that Vulkan can do this on the Linux side of things. What I would have loved to have seen though would be that this game be built from the ground up with Vulkan. That way both platforms would have probably enjoyed really high frame rates. Because as you can see right here, in the town where a lot of gameplay happens for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we're seeing barely 2 to 3 frames per second difference on average. And that's with the fact that Vulkan has to do additional work here. Imagine if Vulkan didn't have to carry the burden of translating DirectX 12 at all. Nonetheless, Feral Interactive has done a really, really great job here. I'm really impressed. Now, I never did finish this game because I couldn't play the game properly at 4K prior to this. Now, with the RTX 3090, I certainly hope that I can. You might want to pause here if you want to see a little bit more details on the final results. But what we're going to do is we're going to jump up straight to DirectX 11 next. So on the left is still the Vulkan implementation. On the right, it's DirectX 11 in Windows. Once again, Vulkan still has to do translation on the left, but the DirectX side doesn't have to do any sort of translation whatsoever. It's just straight through from the game to the graphics card to your output. And I found something rather surprising here. Now, I reran these tests a few times on Windows just to be absolutely certain. We're still seeing the same amount of uh, VRAM usage even though it's DirectX 11, but what we're seeing is greater dips in DirectX 11. Now that shouldn't be the case, especially considering DirectX 11 doesn't have to do any translation work whatsoever. If anything, it should be on par or if not slightly behind DirectX 12 and matching Vulkan, but it's not. Somehow, Feral Interactive has managed to pull a rabbit out of the hat here with the fact that the Vulkan implementation can actually beat DirectX 11. And that's insane if you think about it. This game was built from the ground up with DirectX in mind. 
So DirectX 11 and DirectX 12. Microsoft money everywhere to go. No Vulkan love whatsoever. But Feral Interactive has to come in at the end of the, the entire development cycle and try and bring up a layer on top of it so that it works on Linux. And yet, DirectX 11 is not able to sustain a win over Vulkan. So in the forest scene, it doesn't seem to be doing too bad, right? They both seem to be on the same level, one or two frames per second difference on the most part. But when we go back into the town once again, where there's a lot of AI and a lot of people, suddenly it tanks again. So at first, looks pretty good, right? You're seeing about a 10, 10-ish frame per second lead, DirectX 11 leading over Vulcan. It's like, okay, not so bad. It's a pretty huge scene with a lot of greenery. That's pretty impressive. It's not DirectX 12 after all, it's still an older API, DirectX 11. But it doesn't translate to when you're actually on the ground and playing the game. So when you play this game, most of the time this is not the kind of scenery that you'll be seeing. You'll actually be on the ground with a lot of AI or units, or if you're in the actual tombs themselves, you have a lot of open spaces but not much foliage. And once again here you see it dip. It dips like crazy. I reran these tests multiple times on Windows trying to get the best results out of it and this is what I got every single time. So whatever is happening here, it's pretty clear that DirectX doesn't seem to know how to properly render on this card at least. Whether it's an NVIDIA driver bug, or if it's a Shadow of the Tomb Raider bug, or if it's just poor implementation of DirectX itself, there's really no excuse here because this game was built with this from the ground up. There's no reason for it to lose this significantly like this. The graphic settings are exactly the same on both platforms. There's really no reason. It looks even the same. I just, I can't imagine where the heck the rest of that 40 frames per second is going. So once again, you get the results at the end here. Feel free to stop it and take a look at those results up close if you want to. So to quickly highlight here, there's quite a lot of uh, graphics options that are missing in the Linux version. Most notably, you don't have the option, of course, to switch to DirectX 12. You don't have ray tracing and you don't have uh, HBAO+. You also don't have... HDR or 3D stereoscopic views. With that said, to keep things the same throughout this benchmark on this RTX 3090, I kept the settings the same on both platforms. It's not fair if we're not doing the exact same settings on both platforms. So anything that wasn't available on Linux, I kept it off on Windows as well. That said, I was kind of surprised that we didn't have the DLSS option on Linux. It's available on Windows, but we don't have it on Linux, even though the NVIDIA Linux driver has DLSS support. I'm not sure if that's a developer option or maybe the implementation in Shadow of the Tomb Raider is very specific to just Windows so they couldn't implement it over. Hopefully in the future we'll see that option available in future titles. I hope we'll see HDR and ray tracing as well. At least right now if you wanted to do ray tracing only on Windows would it be possible? With this title at least. But then again at 4K 60fps if you try to turn on ray tracing you're not going to get 4K 60fps with this card. And this is the top of the line card right now on the market. So with all that said, we've actually reached the end of the benchmark of Shadow of the Tomb Raider on both systems. What I'll do here is that I'll showcase some Shadow of the Tomb Raider 4K gameplay on Ubuntu with the overlay on the top right. So you can go ahead and take a look at what it's like to actually play the game, what the VRAM and RAM usage is like, and how much the GPU is utilized throughout this, and whether or not we can maintain 60 FPS, at least in this portion of the video. Now as we go over this, I will say that four years ago I believed that Vulkan was the better API compared to DirectX 12 and now four years later I still believe that Vulkan is the better graphics API. But as always money is king and Microsoft's money I believe has won them this race. DirectX 12 is pretty much everywhere even if it's not that great. It's so protrusive everywhere in the market that even AMD, the guys who helped create Vulkan, are now pretty much selling DirectX 12 everywhere, including the Xbox Series X on Windows 10 and so on and so forth. And with the recent Microsoft purchase of the Doom IP, for those of you who don't know, Doom, the game, is actually using Vulkan under the hood and it performs amazingly. But now that Microsoft owns it, there is no reason for them to keep Vulkan around and we're likely going to be losing this game that has probably the best Vulkan implementation out there to DirectX 12. So if there are any future Doom titles, they are likely to be DirectX 12 only, realistically speaking. 
Now all in all, I feel that this Shadow of the Tomb Raider released by Feral Interactive is probably one of their best releases so far. Now, it, I wouldn't say it's the best because it has a lot of room to improve. For example, I'd love to see DLSS and ray tracing plus HDR supported in the game on Linux. I don't expect that stereoscopic stuff to be there. I don't think most people use that either. But it would have been lovely to have the ray tracing feature at the very least, if not DLSS. I don't believe that DLSS is restricted on the Linux side. NVIDIA does have support for it in their Linux driver as far as I know. So it's probably a Square Enix deal issue that could be in play here. But they have managed to pull a rabbit out of the hat with this one. I am blown away by the fact that the Vulkan implementation that Feral had to do that has to translate DirectX 12 and DirectX 11 calls under the hood before it can output anything to the screen can beat DirectX 11. It tailgates DirectX 12. 1 to 2 frames per second difference on the majority of the period of time when you're playing and only a few differences that are major and usually major really means just about 10 frames per second difference here compared to Vulkan. With that said, I'm kind of surprised that DirectX 12 didn't pull further ahead in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I figured that considering the game was built from the ground up with DirectX in mind, it would have performed a whole lot better, but apparently this game is still pretty heavy. Even for the RTX 3090, it's not possible to always push past 100 frames per second with everything on, without ray tracing and HDR, of course. So just imagine if Shadow of the Tomb Raider was developed from the ground up in Vulcan. Not only those of us who game on Linux would have a great performing game, but those on Windows who would probably be enjoying a greater performing experience too. Those higher frame rates can mean that the developers can do a lot more with the scene. With that said, of course, the experience portrayed in this video here is not the end all be all. I'm sure people will have different experiences across the board. I think I saw a benchmark by Gear Seekers, where they actually had the Linux version beating out the Windows version from their graph results, as far as I could tell. So that's pretty impressive. So all in all, what do you think of this Linux release by Feral Interactive? Have you guys had a chance to purchase the title, or are you still waiting? Also, where do you think the computer market will be five years from now in terms of graphics APIs? Will we even care about Vulkan and DirectX 12 anymore? Go ahead and share your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you've got Shadow of the Tomb Raider, do share your experience with the rest of us too. It's fun to see those who are on different distributions or even operating systems sharing their performance with others. We'd still be in there. Don't know if you'd be doing much. Hey, you want to freshen up? We group at the cafe. Dr. Dominguez is supposed to be there tonight. Sounds good. I'll try and decipher the riddle, see if the date has anything to do with it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching this video and have a great day ahead. By the way, this cafe is supposed to have really good food. I know the chef. Yeah, I'm not very hungry. <laughs> After all of that, I'm starving.